star in the east on Christmas morn. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. It'll lead to the place where the Savior's born. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your rams. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your ewes and leave your rams. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. If you take good heed of the angel's words, rise up, shepherd, and follow. You'll forget your flocks, you'll forget your herds. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. A year ago, I abruptly ended my opening words on the Sunday before Christmas with a St. Nicholas legend that he gave his money to downtrodden families anonymously. He would fill stockings with gold coins and throw them into open windows and sometimes down chimneys. This year, I've been reflecting on how much I liked Christmas in my early years where my gifts came from Santa Claus rather than relatives. I and several of my cousins were born pretty close together in the mid 1940s, a year or so after our father's return from World War II military service. My father's family, consisting of eight brothers and sisters and their spouses and kids, all lived nearby, either in my grandmother's three tenement house, where she and my uncle Benny and his family lived on the first floor, my uncle Pat's family lived on the second floor, and my father, mother, and I lived on the third floor. Or they lived in small apartments less than a half mile away. On Christmas Eve, the entire clan would pack into my grandmother's apartment for a noisy supper, after which Santa would come with a huge bag of gifts. For the kids, just the kids as I like to remember it, I have only fond memories of that period. As we kids got older, however, the gift anonymity eroded. Santa would announce not only who the gift was for, but also whom it was from. And we cousins had to dutifully hug and kiss both Santa and the giving relative. By the time my grandmother died, when I was 12, my family was settled into the house my parents built, literally across the street from my grandmother's house. And the gift giving became stressful and a logistical hassle that traumatized me for embarrassingly too long. But the message I have for myself and for you is to consciously practice recalling the good times rather than the difficult times. In this worth worsening winter pandemic, we need to pull out all the stops to escape its grip on our psyche. I propose that escaping into good mem time memories can be a healthy alternative to alcohol, sweets, and other processed foods. But back to the idea of anonymous giving. This is a challenging concept for me. For example, when I buy takeout, I hold my tip in my hand until the server can see me putting it in the tip jar. My family and friends do consider me generous, but in a way I am earning their respect and affection by being generous. So this year, I tried putting cash in cards with no sign that it was coming from me. Surprisingly, and happily, it felt good. However, here I am getting to brag to you about it. So let it be. Our chalice is lit in our church sanctuary by Jen Del Deo and Tom Barrett. Imagine that the light from our chalice can guide you back to your favorite holiday gathering. Who were you with? What were you doing? More importantly, what were you feeling? See if you can feel that now, just by reflecting on that cherished time. Allow that feeling of love surrounding you to comfort you now and make you whole in this hour, however dark this hour might be.
I'm going to go over and light the Advent wreath that we've been uh, lighting all during this holiday time. And I'm going to light the center candle. Throughout this entire holiday season, we have observed the twinkling of starlight, the shimmering of tree light that's seen through windows, and the pleasant glow of candles nestled on sills. Each of these sights is a reminder of the spectacle of the holiday and the bringing of light to the dark evenings. And it symbolizes us being light bearers to one another. Each Sunday as we gathered, we honored the various spiritual and religious traditions that were celebrated by members of the community. In many households around the world, the Advent wreath is part of the holiday season. The four candles are placed in a wreath of evergreens, one to be lighted on each of the four Sundays preceding Christmas and the fifth lit now on Christmas Eve. Advent time for those who honor the Christian traditions is a time for waiting for the birth of Jesus. Each candle represents hope, peace, joy, and love, with the fifth announcing the birth of Jesus. And that tradition, in fact, may go far back to the ancient fire wheel lighted in the darkest time of the year to lure the sun back to ensure another spring. And the placement of the candles at the four compass points of the wreath invokes the natural spirits of north, south, east, and west, and the primal elements of earth, air, fire, and water. And the candles also represent the seasons of our lives and of the year. This evening, I relit all of the candles, and I lit the one in the center. And I say, spirit of the east, spirit of air, of morning and springtime, be with us as sun rises in times of beginning. Inspire us with hope. And spirit of the south, spirit of fire, of noontime and summer, be with us through the heat of the day and help us to be ever growing in peaceful ways. Warm us with strength and energy for the work that awaits. And spirit of the West, spirit of water, of evening and autumn, be with us as sun sets and help us to enjoy the richness of this time. Flow through us with healing and quietness and fill us with joy. Spirit of the North, spirit of earth, of nighttime and winter, be with us in the darkness in time of quiet reflection center us in the wisdom of the changing season as we celebrate the spiraling journey of our lives and fill us with love. And our last candle in the center is lit to mark the birth of the infant Jesus. And it is lit for all the innocent children of the world. It is lit for those from all countries, all religions, all parentage, all cities and states, it is lit for young and for old and for in between, and is lit for each and every one of us who carries the light of love inside of us. And may this light shine, 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 and be a beacon of hope to this entire world. May it be so. Please join me in reciting our mission statement.
the words are displayed on your screen. At South Church, we nurture spiritual growth through worship, learning, and community. We celebrate the worth and dignity of all people, and we inspire one another to act on our faith in the larger community. Barlock. Our first reading tonight is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
is Max Murdoch. Our second reading tonight is also from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. The Adoration of the Shepherds. Now there were, in the same country, shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior, who is the Christ. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and laying in manger. And suddenly there's with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill towards all. Six, six, one, six. 
bricks that couldn't get fixed. Five for the gospel. told you or not, but um, that was delightful the first time, and I just wanted to get up and dance. Uh, I heard that sometimes the place really gets rocking when that gets going, and I can understand why that was just delightful. What a tradition to have, and that's uh, in part what I want to talk about tonight, some traditions and connections, and I want to talk about a little about olives. I would like to introduce you to Oliver. Olivia Vaughn Housetree the second. She, he, they, beautiful. They like both names and they are glad to be in a Unitarian Universalist home where they can define their individual and unique softness. Now, Ollie has only lived in two houses, but they love to travel vicariously and Ollie is loaded with ornaments from many places. Gettysburg, an owl, Key West, Florida, a boat, California, a bird made out of bark and branches, which my eldest son, Scott, who lives out there, gave me. York Beach, Maine, a shell, Mexico, a beaded ornament. And one of my favorites is the eye of God, my youngest son, Eric, made in the third grade. See that little eye of God? Now, Eric is now 52. And he makes a face whenever he sees that ornament on Holly. And I always make sure to put it right where he can't miss it. I'm old, Ma. That's what he calls me, Ma. Sort of like, I don't know, like a sheep mother or something. 
he says, well, I hang on to it and keep putting it up. And I reminded him, it is often the things that come down to us through the generations that are so special and give unique characteristics to ordinary things. What comes down through the generations for you? And what special traditions do you hold on to that mark the uniqueness of your life or your family's life and your special moments? Because if nothing else, the season is full of traditions, gathering for candlelight service, hearing music we're familiar with, special food, putting out treats for Santa, singing carols, hearing the birth story read from the book of Luke. Thank you to all who read. Extending greetings to one another, and though this year it was uh, rather interesting to do it by chat, but we did have a time as people were gathering at the beginning to shout hello through the space. Those traditions that we have are both similar and unique to each of us too. Now, every year since my grandson has been born, going on 24 years now, I have bought and dated a new Christmas ornament that reflects Kevin, my grandson's interest, activities, and events of the last year. And also the other tradition is decorating Ollie and making them sparkle and shine, sometimes with lights and tinsel, and sometimes just with old fashioned ornaments, sometimes only with the ornaments given me to me by my loved ones were taken back from travel spots. But Ollie is always part of the scheme. This year, when I moved up to Kittery and knew I was going to be here for the season, I was hit with a wave of sadness that Ollie was too big to pack up and bring with me. As you see, Ollie is now so tall that they touched the ceiling of my home at Country Lane. Ollie would not take well to traveling. Ollie would not take well to coming up here. Ollie is too tall. And I was sad. About a day or two after Thanksgiving, I was out doing some shopping and I spied a new Ollie. Now I know that you all think I'm a little wacky, but this new Ollie, the small, yelled at me and waved his arms about and told me I absolutely must, must, must take him home to Kittery. Yes, this Ollie is a he and he is quite happy here. We decorated him and Ron, my spouse, decorated his new pot. And not only have you seen his picture, but you may have spotted Ollie behind me over here in the corner. Ollie is small enough to be moved around the house to be put in the spotlight and displayed in all his glory. Now Ollie Vaughn Main of 11 Whipple Road and Ollie Vaughn House of 42 Country Lane are similar. They are both of the Norfolk Pine family, but they each have unique characteristics just as we do. They have different postures, they have different arms and trunks and they have different ways of wanting to be labeled and they have different ways of wanting to be decorated. They have different ways of showing us who they are and they have different traditions. They have different identities, but together they are from a family tree, a family unit, just as we are. And we might be blended families with lots of step sibs and kids and we might be families with two moms or two dads or families with one mom or one dad. We might be like Jesus's family who were a mixed family, an immigrant outcast family with a stepfather, Joseph, and some brothers and sisters who were much younger than Jesus, almost like a second family. We might be an elder family with kids and grandkids and great friends living far and wide and there are many possibilities. But one thing I have come to know since being with you at South Church, we are a lovely church family, a lovely, lovely church family who cares deeply for one another. A loving church family who bakes cookies and brings them to those shut in and lonely. 
a connected church family who walk labyrinths and hang out together at fire pits and a funny, funny church family who created a virtual pageant with dogs and dogs and cats and cats and mice and angels and stars and wolves and dragons and grass eating sheep and shepherds and dancing gangs and a woman who searches till she finds that which is important and keeps it safe and protected and she searches for what is lost because it is a very precious part of her very being and she protects it when she finds it. And we are a united source of goodness and blessing to the larger community. We hang our blessings on golden stars to let the world know that South Church Unitarian Universalist is where our heart is and where love from us meets the entire world, extending hope, joy, peace, and love out into the universe. Traditions and uniqueness and connections are the glue that hold us together this Christmas Eve and this holiday season. <laughs> I seem to be drawn to the connection and tradition of collecting living greens. For uh, two weeks ago, when my spouse was out grocery shopping, he brought back one more special and unique gift to make 11 Whipple Road our holiday place. May I introduce you to Molly. She is related to Ollie the second and Ollie the small and she is in the family of the Norfolk Pines. Isn't she just lovely? And she greets you with all joy and may this night bring you peace of mind and a heart full of gratitude and harmony, and may it be so. Each year, the members of South Church nominate and vote on local nonprofit organizations, which then become the recipient of half of the donations collected on all the Sundays in a specific month. For example, in January, we'll be splitting our Sunday donations with Planned Parenthood, in February, with the Black Heritage Trail, in March, Women Aid, etc. However, the Christmas Eve service is special in that we use all the donations you give tonight to fund our minister's discretionary fund for the entire next year. Our minister can tap into this fund provide confidential financial assistance to any member or friend of South Church in need. To donate to this fund, go to the South Church website and click on the Giving tab at the top of the home page. Then select the Donate Now option, which brings you to a screen where you can select 100% church donation. Please give as generously as you are able. Thank you.
so many buttons to press. I invite you now into a time of meditation and prayer. But before we do that, I'm also going to invite you to turn off the lights in your in the rooms that you're in, if you, if you can do that, um, because following the prayer, we will we'll have a, a, a minute of silence sitting in darkness together, and then we're going to move into our candle lighting. And the candle lighting itself, I have something for you to remember, because we like to maintain the quiet into the candle lighting. Um, what we're gonna do is after I share a prayer, we'll have a minute of silence, and then you'll see the chalice lit in the sanctuary come up on your screen. And when you see that, that is the cue to you to light your own candle wherever you are. But before you light your candle, I highly encourage you to go up to that view button in the top right-hand corner of the Zoom screen. Don't do it now, but do it when you see the chalice come up and change your view to gallery so that you can see all of the windows of the people who are here together tonight. And then light your candle and enjoy watching all of the lights illuminate the screen and we'll hear some music together. But before all of that, I offer you a prayer tonight. It is actually a poem written by Dr. Maya Angelou titled Amazing Peace, a Christmas Poem. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Floodwaters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening, we question ourselves. What have we done to so affront nature? We worry, God. Are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air, the world is encouraged to come away from rancor. Come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us. As we make our way to higher ground, hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things. Even hate, which crouches, breeding in dark corridors. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Zionist, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first it is too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now. It is louder, louder than the explosions of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for, 
not just the absence of war, but true peace, a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and for their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say come, peace. Peace, we look at our world and speak the word aloud. Peace, we look at each other and then into ourselves. And we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul.
Okay, so when you are ready, you can extinguish your candles as we prepare to extinguish the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Hush, hush, and listen now. Feel the blessed silence. Feel and know that this is the quiet and blessed time of heartfelt peace and soul-felt plenty. The presents have been wrapped. The food has been made ready. The cards have been sent. The house has been gloriously decorated. It is done. And even if it is not, it is time for it to be done. It is time to hush and listen and feel the silence. Christmas Eve, that most silent time of the season, the most peaceful, the most hopeful, and into this sacred and holy time we came. We bring our gifts of joy and peace, compassion and love to this night and in the next few days ahead. And may the time we have spent together this evening, may it have filled your soul with all that is good. May it prepare your heart for acceptance of all that is and can be so chaotic about this time. But the preciousness of this day and this eve is with us. And let us not ever forget the special moments of pure enjoyment that can break in upon us. It is done now. It is done now. Hush, listen, and be in peace. May it be so.
Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It was so wonderful to be with you all tonight. Awesome. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wait a minute, Elena has his names under me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. everybody. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> what a wonderful night. Oh, Susan's here. Hi, Susan York. Hi. Merry Christmas, friends. Merry I loved Christmas, everybody. I loved being with you all tonight. Merry oh, it was so great to have you twice, Connie. Good to have everybody here. Yay. Merry Christmas, Julia. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Dad. Dad, good to see you. Good night, Betty. Hi, Chicago. Everyone. I see Joe Coles. I haven't seen Joe Coles in forever. Hi, Joe. Merry Christmas. Hi, Joe. Oh, hi, Mom. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Jen. I can see all your faces. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Jen, you have such a beautiful voice. Oh, yes. thank you, Connie. Thank you. I love hearing you. Get off. Oh, that's gone. Merry right, Christmas, East Clan. I'm not crying because I cried at the five o'clock. I already got it all out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were beautiful at the five o'clock, too. Oh, <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mike and Eric. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Joanne and Mike. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. It's so Thank great you, to Bob be with you and guys. Jonathan. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. It was a beautiful job. Yeah. Really Thank great you. service. Nice. Thank you. So, so nice much. to see you all. Have a wonderful night and a <laughs> great day tomorrow. Happy, happy, happy holidays, everybody. So nice to see you.
Good night. Go. Have a good no um, day tomorrow, everyone. You, Thanks, Connie, you too. Hi, yeah. Mike and Eric. Hi. Hey, Chris. Again. Oh, and I see Chloe and Kimberly and Doug. Hi, guys. <laughs> Elena, so cool. I feel like we're on like an awards show and I'm like shouting people out and then I just see random like people <laughs> wave. <laughs> Elena, I'm so glad to see you. Likewise. Likewise. Elena. And it was Good so night, everyone. Good night, night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bob, your outfit is amazing. <laughs> yes, Bob, we like your hat. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that was too fun. <laughs> oh, what a treat. Julia, hi, Chicago. Hi. Julia's just being all oh, cool over there. Trying to get my mom's attention. Oh, I Merry see Christmas. You too. Bye. Oh, hi, guys. <laughs> Look at the family's all here. Look at that. They're right next to each other on my Oh, Lauren. Julia. <laughs> awesome. But I saw you guys already. <laughs> I loved how you turned your, um, your camera. I to face your little um your candle while uh while we were lighting the chalice that was very sweet <laughs> so great hi paula yeah. hi lauren i love you paula i miss you guys. hi new girls mm -hmm. good night girls the muscles in my face are cramping from smiling. Oh, I was just thinking that my cheeks hurt. <laughs> I've been smiling for like five hours. <laughs> and on that note, I am going to say Merry Christmas and good night to you all. I have a couple of stockings left to stuff before the morning. Yeah, so. right the <laughs> right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Love Thank you all. You yeah. 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 What a way to meet everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One day. References and that was just wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> that was a very beautiful service. Incredible. Impressive. Mm -hmm. Hi, Susan and Hi, Simon. Joanne. Hi, Joanne. So good to see you. Hi, Di. Hi, you guys look beautiful. <laughs> Susan's got her apron on. You can see what's going on here. Oh, cooking it. <laughs> mighty festive. Oh. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks for being part of the crazy gang, the crazy dancing gang. Oh, my yeah, yeah. can be here. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, Di. Good to see you. Good night. Good night. Okay, I'm gonna close this down. Okay, good night. Great job, Great job Susan. Good night all. So much love to everyone. Yeah, Kirsten, thank you for showing off my babies, my ollies. <laughs> You're welcome. I think I did better that time. <laughs> well, it was fun the last time, too. All right, Ollie and Molly are very